Seven years ago, my friend Patrick and I took a challenge. We took a challenge of finding a solution of a growing number of street children that was rising very fast in Kigali. That's in July 2012. I was only 19 years old, just graduated from high school. We had no idea of what we wanted to do. I was never a street child, neither was Patrick. He was completely coming from a place of responsibility. When we started thinking of strategies and activities to attract these children from streets to school, that's what we thought. We got stuck to this concern of do we know, do we even know what's really wrong? Do we even understand why they're there? So we decided to take the whole year, 12 months, every Saturday, we went to streets, we met these children, we played football with them, we played some gambling, it happens there as well. We ate sugar canes with them, and we had an opportunity to have conversations. Conversations about life. Why did you come here? We asked questions, and they asked questions back. Today, as I speak, one of the children that came to our first Saturday program his name is Joel. Today he's a volunteer at Root Foundation. He's a graduate from high school. He's also a very good brass player. And he's joining university very soon through the Rwanda National Police Scholarship. Isn't that awesome? It's an African Union anthem, if you know it, which sings let us make Africa the tree of life. That's how the chorus sings. So when you think of these words, when you think of this aspiration, when you listen to the words of this song, like me, you might understand that there is an extremely long journey between the Africa we have today and the Africa we want. And the big question is, who is going to take us there? There, where Africa will be the tree of life. The tree of life. I can't wait. The question is, who is going to take us there? Especially when you look at the Africa we have today. Leaders, they also don't trust no one else to replace them. They are the only ones. Our young people are so blinded with music, with Hollywood, with fashion. They don't even care of how their future is being shaped. Mention the rate of poverty and the regional conflict. If this is the Africa we have today, how are we going to get there to the Africa we want? It is definitely going to take more than just a few individuals. We can't keep thinking of Thomas Sankara, he's gone. Nelson Mandela is gone. All those guys that we keep thinking of, they are gone. Who's going to take us there? I believe it is going to take an entire generation of a transformed mind from the root-based education system. I'm not the only one who believes that education has the power to transform the minds of people. Education has more to offer than just skills and knowledge. So today, I want to share with you a few beliefs, a 
few values that I think, if they are set as the core of our education system, then this generation can achieve and can take us to that Africa where we we'll believe in in the tree of life. The number one belief that I think our policy makers should set as the core of our education system is African identity. It is actually the essence of all the choices. When you don't know, when you don't connect, when you don't understand your identity, then it is hard to be the source of any solutions. We don't learn our history. We don't learn our realities. And we don't even learn this dream. And you are meant to achieve this dream. Unless it is like those uh, political strategies if you are also familiar with these strategies, when a president is elected, they set this 50 years vision, you know, so that people can wait until the vision is achieved, then they can think of replacing it. <laughs> <laughs> but if this is a true vision that our leaders want to achieve, they have to teach it. They have to repeat it in schools in homes. The number two belief I have that I think it should be taught and repeated <coughs> in our schools and in our homes is community service. We are poor and we should remember that it's not bad. In this world where a young boy in Kigali who is very broke wants to live like a hip hop star in America. <laughs> you don't you don't care, you know, you, you don't care. When you see him, you're like, man, how much money do you make? It's like I live with my mother, I live with my dada, I am a senior post student. Like, what? You look like you know, in this world where everybody's thinking of how do I look? How do I, how am I respected? How much do I, how much money do I make? In this world that is like that, Africans should be true to ourselves. That we still need this community. We still need to serve. We still need to think of family members, we still need to think of neighbors. We still need to think of our country and our neighbors. We need it. And this should be taught from the early age. I made a survey when I was preparing this talk. I called 30 children and I asked them a few questions. I won't mention the questions. But I wasn't surprised. I just wanted to make sure I can use numbers at TED Talk. <laughs> 98% of those children, they consider a white person as a giver and a black person as a receiver. And I wasn't surprised. And it, because it's not only in those children, it is in many people's mindset. We see many problems around, around the streets where we live, where we, where we study, where we work. We see many problems. But somehow, I don't know where that hope comes from, but somehow we think a particular Muslim will come and will share the program and I mean, and they have money, you know, they have a way to do things, so they will sort it. I don't know where that mindset comes from. But it is true. That's a sad reality. 
The number three, thing I think should be taught in our schools, in our homes, and should be made a policy. Our policy makers should think, should understand that we need these values taught from primary school and repeated at every class level. Resilience. Resilience. Last year, I was in the United States and when I finished my, my summit that I was attending, I took a bus to North Carolina, I visited my best friend, and then there was a random family around. I got to visit them as well. I met this woman, and it was so fun. We talked Kinyarwanda, we talked about home, until I said, I have to go. <laughs> she kind of laughed. She's like, what? Go where? I mean, I have to go back to catch my flight, to go back to Kigali. To go where? <laughs> she was surprised and disappointed. Like, are you telling me you're such a young person, brilliant, and you're leaving the United States of America to go back to what? <laughs> to Kigali? <laughs> and, and, and it is not the unique situation. It is not the unique experience. I know you know those stories. You know your friends who can never think of coming back. I'm not against going and staying in another country. But if it is out of the fear, if it is out of being afraid of not having food, of not having a good phone, of not having I don't know, all those wishes that we have as individuals, and you just forget your community like that. So resilience is the understanding that our children should start from early stage facing their own challenges. The things they see in the community, face them. If my family is not doing well, my children should learn that we are a family, we get hungry together, we find food together, we eat together, we progress together. And this cannot be taught to people who are already in their twenties. If it has to help us to achieve that tree of life Africa, it has to be taught from the young age. I'm happy I have my own son. And I'm already writing a song for him. I'm saying to him that he's my hands. He's the hands of our family. He's our Indian If he gets away from us, if he doesn't take responsibility of our family, nobody else will. And all the sons and daughters of Africa should think the same way.